Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Lot Talk, episode four. My name's Chris Keen. I'm one of the co-hosts here. I'm the Senior Vice President of Dealer Relations for Lot Pop. And joining me, as always, my awesome co-host, Peepaw himself, Mr. John Anderson, our Executive Vice President and Chief Experience Officer, and Director of Training and Performance Engineering, Mr. Ronaldo Leonard. Gentlemen, good morning. John, I got to ask you a question. Did you get your warm milk? You got your Snuggie on. I know winter time's coming. I want to make sure Peepaw's nice and comfortable because we got a lot to cover today. What's up? What's up? Yeah, I did. I get, Look, here, I got it, and I got uh, I got a little uh, portable heater underneath the desk on my feet, so I'm nice and comfortable. So, so nothing to worry about. You guys don't worry about me. Uh, the elder of the group. So you're so disrespectful of the elders in the room. So, so it's good to see y'all today though. And your bright and shiny faces and, and, uh, Chris, it's nice to see that, um, one of the listeners, one of our listeners or watchers had a request that you'd wear your cowboy hat. Uh, and, and you, you, uh, uh, you did that today. So that, uh, that's nice of you, man. I, I, I like you. I like you. Uh, uh, red dirt hillbilly, baby. I like you. Well, that's what we're here for. We're here to appease the listeners. <laughs> we are here to appease the listeners. We are here to appease the watchers. But more importantly, as always, we're going to work the facts today. We're going to share audio wise, video wise. We're going to share so many different things that's going to help our automotive industry brothers and sisters out there take all the suck out of what it is that we do. We're going to work the facts. We're going to help them keep it simple. So, Ronaldo, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Shoot. The topic, the topic of today, set it and forget it. We are going to unpack that crock pot theory in automotive. Now, you gave us, when we were talking earlier this week, I, I think you're the one who brought it up. Give our listeners, give our viewers a little history around the crock pot. <laughs> well, I don't know about uh, the crock pot, uh, but and where that originated, you know. Uh, but down in Texas, you know, when we do that barbecue, we go low and slow. Uh, and so it takes a little time for things to marinate in those juices and that flavor to come out and just pop you in the mouth. Um, preach baby preach well, well, hey man there ain't nothing like it um <laughs> but when uh when we were talking about what we were going to discuss this week um and everything centered around how we have this set it and forget it mentality the thing that came to my mind was uh i don't know if you guys remember ron popeil he was an he was the creator of the uh infomercial and he would come up with uh he had a couple of gadgets that you used in the in the kitchen, and his tagline was, "All you have to do is set it and forget it." And you know, <laughs> a lot of people have taken that mentality when it comes to managing uh, the dealership, both on the inventory side and especially on the lead side. And you know, when every day we're having conversations about how to help dealers vertically integrate both their lead management and their inventory management processes, set it and forget it is the last thing you want to do. And so, well, you uh, yeah, and that, but that's one of the things that guys uh, are so entrenched in. I mean, it's become part of their culture um, and it's a big obstacle to overcome in order to get them to change that, uh, that, that paradigm. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was the, uh, yeah, that was the, the, uh, the motivation behind it and the basis behind it. Um, but then, I mean, I can go out and look out my back door and see a, a Traeger smoker. And uh, that's kind of the same mentality. So I'm guilty as charged. I like to set it and forget it as well. <laughs> but I'm still doing good. <laughs> you know, you know, before, John, we were talking about it earlier this week, too. Uh, when we were talking about the, the crock pot, the whole set it, forget it piece of it. Do you remember how fun it used to be to almost be like, a detective and appraisals back in the day took a whole lot longer. And the only reason why they took a lot longer, 
because we got to spend time digging through the vehicle, trying to figure out exactly where those customers been shopping. Because remember, it never failed. You look down in between the seats and there was that old Auto Trader magazine or there was that old newspaper and they had all the vehicles circled that they were going to look at. And then you start looking back at the dealership going, oh man, they're looking at one of those kind of vehicles. What price are they looking at? So we got to do all the detective work. I, listen, I'm almost ashamed to tell y'all this, but there's been many times on an appraisal. I look over and I see what they've been looking at in the newspaper, driving down the road. I stop by a gas station and throw the newspaper away. <laughs> so they forget what dealerships they need to go to or what pricing they even looked at. You ever do that, John? Um, I, you know what? I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is the right platform for me to share some of the things I did. I, you know, I get myself in trouble, but you know, we were talking about it earlier this week. I, I remember many times, I hate to admit it, but I'd pop open the glove box and, and, uh, and, and look in that glove box to see if I could find anything that about the vehicle that would help me on the appraisal. So, um, yeah, I mean, I listen, um, uh, what, what's the old saying all's fair in, uh, in love and war. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I, the, you know, listen, I, we used to actually believe it or not. And I, I don't know if it's done that much anymore, but we used to actually get out and drive that car off the lot. Right. And drive it for, for a mile or two. Um, you know, I think a lot of times now it's, it's uh, drive it around the lot. Right. Uh, instead of off the lot, but yeah, there, the, you'd be amazed. Um, if you take a little time with that, with that car, what you could find out about it just by looking around in the car. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that car will, that car will tell you, uh, like you said last week, you know, you cut me open, uh, Chris, and you see the rings on me and the, and the age, right. The same thing on that car, that, <laughs> that car will tell you an amazing story if you let it. Right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, yeah. the, I would tell you that was a lot of fun though. And, you know, on that same topic of, you know, the title of today's episode, a wonderful episode for here. You know, we sit there, we talk about set it, forget it. And John, you bring up a great point. I mean, we would sit there and in today's time, you know, you'd ask the salesperson, hey, is the air blow codes, the radio work, you roll the windows down, you know, you hear any funny ticks in it. And managers, you know, they don't take the Velcro off their ass and get out there and go shake the car down for more reasons than just making sure it's mechanically sound, making sure everything's working, checking paint lines on it, you know, doing all the things that we would historically do to make sure the vehicle's right. But then more importantly, like you just said, you just sit inside that car and you just look around, it'll speak to you and it'll start telling you some things if you would just get out and go drive it. But also I would, you know, I would sit there and say, and some of you guys might've did this, uh, I would love to hear if salespeople are doing this today. So if you are and you're watching this on YouTube, comment below because I'd like to hear if you're doing it. But one of the things that we implemented, you know, back in the day, John and Ronaldo, was we actually had the salesperson ask the customer to take them on a test drive in the vehicle that they were trading. That man, that spoke so many volumes. John, did y'all ever do that? I mean, it was, you know, it's, long time ago. it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting you brought that up, Chris, because I, you know, I, um, that was something I was gonna, I was gonna mention when you were done is, uh, that very thing, right? I, I'm curious to know how many, uh, how many people nowadays, uh, salespeople, right? either do that, encourage the customer to go on the, uh, a test drive with them, or at, if nothing else, walk them out and walk around that car with them, uh, and sit inside uh -huh. that car as they're, as they're doing that appraisal. Right. Uh, you know, uh -huh. it's amazing. Um, you don't really have to, I used to tell my salespeople all the time, you, you don't really have to say anything, uh, to a customer, right? If that car, um, if that car has, a, let's say a car has a scratch on a fender, right? As you're walking around that car, all you have to do is put your finger or your hand by that scratch and just kind of rub on it. And typically that customer 
there's a story behind that, right? So that customer will offer that story up, right? Oh yeah, I had my uh, I had my son's uh, bike hanging in the garage and I knocked it off the wall and it hit the fender and put a scratch Ooh. on it, right? So you just basically by you just walking around and acknowledging what you're seeing on that car or what you see on the inside and you have that customer with you, a customer will offer up the story behind that. And then you can note all that down, right, for for uh, the final appraisal. So, um, you know, that's, I, I, I think, and I, I hope people do comment. I'll, I'd be curious to hear myself because I think that's kind of a lost art these days it, as a part of that set it and forget it, right? We just, um, we just, we just take the information from the customer and then hand it into the appraiser and the appraiser goes out and appraises a car. I, I, I'm curious to see how much interaction there is these days. The old yeah, silent well, walk around, man. I, yeah. I used to love that. Yep. Cause yep, you would, exactly. as you said, like you mentioned, you just walk around and touch, you don't have to say a word. No, nope. you don't have to touch the scratch. You could be in the vicinity and touch it. <laughs> and then here comes a 15 minute story about that whiskey. Gym. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. And you, I mean, back then we, we never really had huge conversations or a huge battle over that appraised value because every time you did that and the customer kind of let you know exactly what was behind the damage on that vehicle. I mean, they're mentally diminishing what they thought they were going to get for it when they came in. But then it also kind of validates the fact that yeah, when we're appraising this vehicle, it's a commodity and, and it is a, it, it's an investment from the dealership, oh. but what you believe it's worth, and what it's actually worth because of all of the work we're going to have to put into it to get it frontline ready, you know, there's two different things, but there's great reason why. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would be surprised if you, if you, I think I've, I got my game plan for the afternoon. I might have to just go to the dealership and pretend to trade in a vehicle just to see if they're still doing it. But I would venture to guess they're just taking down the information plugging the numbers in and putting a number on it. Hey, you guys yeah. think they're, you guys think they're training on that these days? Cause here's my, here's my thing. And we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. right? Um, how many, how many uh, folks have come into the uh, automotive industry, right? Business um, since 2008, 2009, right? The last time we had a wild market swing and um, you know, the housing, the housing crisis that happened back then. And then, um, and then you had cash for clunkers and, and then obviously people were using the internet more. So a lot of dealerships, uh, switched an emphasis to, you know, not, not necessarily needing those auto Titans on their floor anymore. They get good service people. Right. But I'm just curious as, you know, you think though, you think the management staff trains on that type of walk around uh, anymore to to uh, uh, to get the salespeople to do that? Because you look, if you come into business since 2010, 2011, unless somebody trains you on that, you're not gonna you're not gonna know that. You, if, uh -oh. you, you you haven't had to right the the used car business has been pretty good at, from that point, so you really didn't have to do a lot of those things that I know we I know the last couple of weeks we referred to the past quite a bit, right? But <laughs> Honestly, you really a lot of that a lot of that art that made us successful it has been lost in the translation forward now, where we're bringing a lot of younger folks are entering into our industry, and I just don't think it's getting trained that much anymore. Yeah, but John, I, I would sit there and tell you, you're right, it's not. But it again leads back to the topic of what we're talking about today. I've said it, forget it, and that old crockpot mentality. Part of the reason and why. You know, we're not seeing that training of the old school is because some of our managers today, some of our dealer principals today, you know, have gotten wrapped up in all this technology and the software and this ease of use and and arguably some of the things that for our franchise dealers that the that the OEMs are forcing dealers to do or some of these things that the federal governments and state governments with compliance and things of that nature are forcing our dealers to do it's almost like they're paralyzed by so much of this additional uh software and tools and things of that nature out there then you have all 
kinds of different vendors, if you will, you know, attacking the dealer going, hey, I've got the latest and greatest widget. I've got the best tool. I've got this. I've got that. Where do you have time to sit down and train your people on those basic fundamentals? I firmly believe and it's because here at Lot Pop, we see it day in and day out, the ability to take that old retro way of doing business, marrying it with the tools that you have today to make the job more seamless, to make the job easier and to make it where you can actually meet the customer where they're at. So John and Ronaldo, I would tell you now in defense of the dealers today, it's almost like, where do we start training on this? How do we start training on it? Because we do have all these tools that are supposed to make our job easier, that are supposed to be like a set it and forget it. But it's really not. Because as we talked about in episode one, where so many consumers are using digital pieces online, they're using all the things uh, available to them, but they still want to come into the dealership and have that human interaction. I think that if we were to give any advice on today's call, it would be gather up some of the old timers like John, look at the things that worked extremely well in the past. How does that marry with the tools that we are provided today? And can we take and make our jobs more efficient by using those two pieces together? Because as we looked at, the days to retail turn, I mean, we're in a small window. The days to retail turn is down by nine days and the shopper index is increasing. So we have a small window of time to get it right. I don't know. That's that's kind of my opinion on it. We all know what's yours. Well, you know, and I was just thinking um, that the things that we have began to focus on or started to focus on with sales consultants has been, let's go get all the information on that trade, enter it in the CRM, get your 10 photos inside so that we can appraise it. And that's replaced what we were speaking about earlier, doing the silent walker app, uh, taking the customer on a test drive of the appraisal before you turn it over to the manager. Those things could be easily integrated because you're spending time mm-hmm. on that process already. And it's not going to extend that process, you know, too much further. The return on that investment in time far exceeds ex- exactly why we're not, not doing it. Um, but and I think you hit the nail on the head. So many other things, so many other plates spinning four managers who, and I don't know about you guys, but when I was brought up in the business, those were the guys that I learned from and took the time to walk me step by step through the process and would hold me accountable. You know, if, if, if my sales manager saw me out visiting with a customer, he knows I'm walking around the vehicle and he knows I'm supposed to be doing the silent walk around. But if he saw me talking to the customer, it was a half deal split right out the gate. And, and I fortunately was the only one that ever happened to, but it was one of those things that, you know, that accountability, it kind of uh, instilled that process. I mean, that I was going to have to do every day, every time without fail, no exceptions. Um, or I knew that there were going to be consequences. And the biggest consequence to it is just, you know, lost gross on the deal. If you don't do the deal right, you're shortcutting yourself. And so um, to answer your question, I did take the long way around the barn. uh, But uh, to answer your question, I think that we've just uh, we've been driven by all of the technology that we have and trying to do things more efficiently, but stepping away from the things that actually uh, created, you know, gross profit and deals and taking shortcuts um, when if we just took a couple of those things and you just mentioned it a minute ago, if we just implemented a couple of those things inside of the process, you know, the, uh, the return would far outweigh the, uh, the expense of the time that's going to take to train it 
and to hold it accountable. Hey guys, let think about this. Uh, if you guys can remember, and I, I'm trying to think how long, but think about how long ago it was that uh, OEMs um, and a couple of new players back then they were new players come in and tried to remove the salesperson out of the equation. Right? That you know they what wasn't it wasn't that what initially what Ford Direct was all about to do directly the consumer do direct business with the manufacturer right um and think and and have any of those been successful over time you well, saw wasn't it wasn't yeah. it car wasn't it carmax i could be wrong on this wasn't it carmax that originally come out with this kiosk where you go in and and or am i thinking of somebody different right where you went in and did business yep. with a kiosk right mm -hmm. and and then uh, they would just basically you put in what you wanted to drive and they would they would and, and our uh, do they have salespeople now? You know, I listen, I think the common thread through all this is people want to do business with people. You're never going to be able to replace, uh, you're never going to be able to replace that per, in my opinion, that person, they want that, they want that personal interaction, right? Everybody wants to brag about, Hey, uh, you need an attorney, go see my attorney. You need uh, a dentist, go see my dentist, right? You need a good car person, go see this person, right? So I think that personal interaction is what uh, everybody wants. And, and I think sometimes that's where, Chris, to your point, we have all this technology and that technology tends to pull us away from that common thread, right? I think everything that we do within uh, the dealership structure, the, the variable, even the fixed operations, right? Everything we do, yes, the technology helps us tremendously, but it should we should look at it as a way that it's helping us to serve that personal interaction, right? To to improve that personal interaction, um, and not think of it from a set it and forget it, and just you know, again, how many times do we see uh, through our software when we're working with dealers, especially new dealers that we bring on, that customers haven't been reached out to in twenty or thirty or or 40 oh. days. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and they're looking for that personal interaction, right? They're looking for, uh, they're, they're, they're trusting us as the, as the professional, right? They're trusting uh -huh. us as the professional. That's going to give them the reasons why they're making, they're making a good decision. You know, is this a good decision for me to purchase this vehicle that I raised my hand and said, Hey, I'm interested in this vehicle on your lot. Right. And they're looking for us to give them that that reasoning, right? Why why should I buy this vehicle, right? And when we ignore that personal interaction, they're going to go find it somewhere else. Absolutely, absolutely. But and and you know, <laughs> in the industry's defense, when you call repeatedly to reach out to a, a prospect and they'd rather receive a text, it's confusing, you know. Yeah, but, yeah you're right. When you're going through that, when you're going through that whole process, um, we always preach that you have to meet the customer where they're at, but you also have to encourage them to meet you where you can kind of figure out exactly. All right. They're telling me that they want to text, but what everybody really wants is to have a nice conversation that's value added with the information or with the, uh, yeah, with the details and information that customers are doing on their own, but they want to uh -huh. hear from a trusted advisor who's going to validate what they've come up with and maybe even disprove some fallacies they may be out there because let's just face it, not everybody is as meticulous with their vehicle descriptions and all of the other data surrounding competitive vehicles and all that good stuff. But um, I think that we have to just take a little bit more time you know you got to slow down to speed up uh in order to to dial in specifically how we can get skills to salespeople who are the face of the dealership in every one of those interactions but how we can train them to be those you know detectives that we need so that they can understand what the customers tell them or the prospect is telling them uh -huh. how and what they want to buy and when they want the process to move forward. So 
It's great. Hey, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, you think you think um, uh, based on what you said about you know sticking up for the industry, and I don't disagree with you, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of customers don't want to have initial conversations, right? They want they they want texts and stuff like that. Um, do, but let me ask you a question: Do you think that we could further that along if uh, in the initial stages uh, as a salesperson? Um, as in the initial stages, we gave them, uh, we, we gave them tremendous value, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, in other words, um, instead of just responding and saying, Hey, I want to hear back from you. We talked about it last week, right? Uh, Chris, you alluded to that experience I had, right? Where we start sending them we start sending them things that are going to pull them in, right? Because we're we're giving them value up front, right? Do you do you feel like if we did that initially, they would be more apt to to be open to having a conversation with us, right? Because we're we're giving them stuff that they they need to consider, and I think that leads to them wanting to have a conversation with us as opposed to just having having a basic conversation. And no, I don't want to talk to you. I'm I just want you to text me. Yeah, I mean it all pretty much just gets down to high quality conversation or high quality questions. You know, when you reply to an initial notification that this customer wants additional information, you know, just following up, you know, I'd be glad to give you that information. Um, when would you like for me to have that available for you? And how would you like for me to communicate it to you? Would you like for me to email you or is text better? I understand that you're working through the day. But would you have 15 or 20 minutes that we could just get, you know, and have a short conversation so that we can set the stage moving forward? Because I don't want to disappoint your expectations. Right. But why don't we just take a couple minutes real quick and set those expectations so that I know exactly what I'm going to have to do to exceed those. And, you know, it's just it, it, it's a it's a thought process that every interaction that we have with that uh, with that prospect. Uh -huh. Our number one goal is to find out what the expectations are, set the expectations moving forward with what's possible and what's not possible, and then follow through with it. Yeah, I think it's even more simply put, Ronaldo. I mean, you're driving right on it. And, John, you're talking about it, meeting the customer where they're at. Customer sends a lead in, customers a phone pop, whatever the case may be and they're asking does it have a panoramic sunroof as a matter of fact it has a panoramic sunroof here's a picture of it here's a quick video of it and even simplified even more going what's next meaning i've answered your question you're obviously using the interweb to find a lot of information about it you found my vehicle i'm answering your questions about it so mr customer you tell us what's next you know and i, and I think we are still a little bit stuck in the fact that we are forgetting that the consumer has more tools now than they've ever had to be able to interact with you, to be able to research and find the information out. But if we could just get as simple as, yes, it does, it doesn't, here it is, here it isn't, answer their questions. And instead of saying, yes, it does have a sunroof, what time this afternoon can you be here? Yes, it does have a sunroof. What's next? What's next in your process, Mr. Customer, Miss Customer? What's next in your process? Where else can I serve you to help you make an educated buying decision? And I think those are some of the things that we're missing. And I'm going to give a shameless plug here with our company here at Lot Pop and with Ronaldo Leonard and our training team. We have segments for all of our listeners out there that are our existing clients. We have segments in our training to help with those soft skill selling points in ways to help improve, whether it's you as a salesperson that's listening to this or watching this, we have an opportunity for you to go to lotpop.com, go to our training. You'll see a sales BDC. It is not limited to just training on our platform. We want to give you more resources and tools, help you sharpen your knife so you can learn how to meet these customers where they're at. So guys, 
I talked about it just a minute ago. And Ronaldo and John, I've pulled it up on the screen here. You know, we've seen the days to retail turn decrease by nine days, shopper index increasing. These soft skills are the things I'm talking about that we need to capture that window of time. And John, you talked about this, this slide here extremely well with some of our dealer clients. Please share that. Share some more of that, that knowledge that you got from the people days and up until 2024, share some of that with us. Well, again, I, I think it's, a, it's extremely important for, uh, as a dealer to understand, you know, what's happening behind the scenes. And I think that's where, uh, that trending helps you, right? We, we always talk about, right. Data helps us to make, uh, uh, good decisions that assist us, right. It's not everything. Right. Listen, um, part of the part of the um, part of the understanding when you're managing a store is your experience. Right. We, we do this all the time. We'll be on a, a call with one of our dealer partners and we'll bring something up and then they'll say, yeah, but right. Yeah, but but these turn better at our store. Right. And what do we typically say? That's how. That's how our partnership or our relationship works like a hand in glove, right? Is that we're giving them a 20,000 or a, a, a macro view and we do dig in deeper, um, but they also know what's happening on their lot. And I think, you know, when you look at, uh, when you look at the trending here um, and you look at uh, wholesale, uh, wholesale percentage sold, shopper index, right? And the directional, right? of what's happening. Look at that wholesale, uh, sold, right. Index. Right. And, and look, that's important right now. Cause guys, how long have, have our dealer partners been, uh, uh, asking us to help them with sourcing inventory, right? Because inventory staying, uh, auctions are expensive and we had a major hurricane that went up the East coast and, uh -huh. and took out a ton of vehicles. Right. So when you look at when you look at that blue trend line, you're thinking, why isn't that thing dipping down? Well, there's a reason, right? And when you look at when you look at shopper index, right? And we we I think we I think we've talked about this all week. Right after the election, you started to see, and I think we anticipated that. You started to see shoppers uh, come into the market. We're seeing it through our our dealers, right? We're seeing leads going up. We're seeing shoppers coming into the market, but is that necessarily? turning into sales. And, and you can see that initially it did that, that green trend line, two weeks old percentage, you saw that trend up, but now it's dipping down again. And I think that's, you know, this is where the, this is where this helps us at is to get an indication of what's, what's happening out there. And then I transfer that to what's happening in my store, right? I listen, uh -huh. I, I can absorb all the market information I want to absorb. But that does that necessarily mirror what's going on in my store? I, I jokingly say this. One of the things that used to happen in this store, a couple stores that I was running is if we had a couple bad days, right, where we, were, where we weren't performing well, um, we didn't have many sales, invariably I'd have a manager walk into my office to try to console me, and they would say, hey, boss, <laughs> I know we've had an off day, but I called the Ford store down the street, and they've been dead too. I wanted to throw a chair at them, right? Because I didn't, I, I didn't, I did not care what the store down the street was doing. I care what we're doing, right? So all this data is good to understand what's happening in the market, but I got to take that and apply it because if I'm not, if I don't have, if I don't have activity going on in my store, and I'm gonna circle back around to what we're talking about today, set it and forget it, right? If I don't have activity going on in my store, the phone's not ringing. I haven't seen anybody on my showroom floor in a couple of days. I've got to get in there and dig. I've got to start making some moves to change that trending, right? Once I start yeah. to see show, once the phone starts ringing, people are on my showroom floor, that snowball has a tendency to roll downhill pretty quickly, but I got to drive that, right? I can't just sit and wait and go, okay, the, it's going to happen eventually. No, I got to get in there. Is my team talking to our customers? What is the quality of the conversations? Have I changed any pricing uh, in the last uh, seven to 14 days, right? I got to drive that activity. Um, I can use this data to understand what's happening in the market, but I got to really understand what's happening at my store. 
You know, John, and you're you're all over it. And for our guys and gals that are just listening, you know what John was talking about that wholesale sold, and you know we have those major disasters over on the East Coast. I mean, what we're seeing here is a fifty eight percent in our wholesale sold. We're seeing the shopper index rising to forty four percent from where it was down at like thirty eight percent. We're seeing that two week sell rate you know, kind of maintained, but a little bit of a dip. And that's with our lot pop customers, you know, selling 43% of their overall inventory over the last two weeks. But the number that really just stands out to me is that retail days to turn going from a 57 down to a 48, going down to 48 days. But like John said, we're circling back to all of these different tools that we have or these different crock pots if you will and if we just sit there and set it and forget it and we don't actionably do the things that we need to do when we have that activity coming in when those phones are ringing when those leads are going up then all you're going to be is a statistic of that Ford store down the street that they ain't selling no cars neither. But then you got guys two doors down that are got their processes set up. They're on top of the lead activity. They're meeting the customer where they're at. They're doing those things. And I think ultimately that's what we're really trying to, to, you know, cascade out there in this messaging today. The tools are great. The third party companies you're working with, they're great. They bring a lot of value. They bring a lot of data. They bring a lot of insights. But no different than when John and Ronaldo and myself and many of you watching or listening today that are from the old school, when we would sit there and appraise that car and we had to do our own data research by looking at what newspaper ad they had or what rag magazine they had or what was in the glove box or the four cans of motor oil that were hidden underneath the seat. We had to do those things back in the day, but you fast forward to 2024, it's all automated for you. So use that information, but you physically have to act upon it. You physically have to open your mouth because as my mentor told me, closed mouths don't get fed. And if you don't open your mouth and speak, if you don't ask those questions, if you don't investigate, if you don't sit there and do the things that you need to do to find out what's next, these this data here on the screen, all you become is a statistic to the opposite side. You don't get to ride that wave where we see that shopper index going from a 38 to a 44. You don't get to ride that wave. You sit on the sidelines. And Ronaldo, when you played ball for Texas Tech, if you didn't go out and practice and if you didn't go out and perform in the practice time, Saturday, where was you at? Did you ride the pine? <laughs> Sitting right there next to Coach Coach Dykes. That's how I became an <laughs> ass back. Yeah. I say, Coach, can I go to the game? <laughs> Like, coach, can I get your ass back? Son, get your ass back. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's, you know, not getting the right, getting the ride that wave that you just talked about just means you can get swallowed up by it. You know, if you've ever watched those guys that are surfing off the uh, North Shore of Hawaii, uh, if you don't catch that wave, (laughs) you're in the barrel just getting pounded off the bottom of the ocean. So, um, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things you have to be investigative. And, uh, you know, everybody's searching for ways to be ahead of the curve. It, it's like Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight used to say that everybody wants to win. But not everybody wants to do what it takes to win. And, you know, it, it is a little hard work. A little hard work mm-hmm. involved with taking all the technology reading the tea leaves, so to speak, but looking at all the data points, connecting the dots for your situation, your market, your people there in the store, Mm -hmm. and then taking all this actionable intelligence and putting a pan in place and making sure that it's executed on. And it's just. Yeah, no, you're spot on. Go ahead, John. 
No, you're good. I, I you know, I, just to what Ronaldo was saying, I, the execution, the execution, yeah. right? Uh, listen, with with all the with all the technology we have today, how easy is it to get uh, distracted or go down rabbit holes, right? Mm-hmm. We look at a piece of information, then we jump to another piece of information, and we jump to another piece of information. Right. And, and, you know, before we know it, that first piece of information that we thought, man, I need to act on that. Now we've, we've gone down so many rabbit holes. We forget to take action on that, that piece of information. And I think that's the important thing, right. Is, is understanding and then understanding what we're seeing and where that, where we need to take action in our store to use Chris, what he says all the time, which I love right in our store with our people in our market. Right. We, we we just, we have a tendency to be people that, that compare so much. Right. And and I, I get it with all social media and everything that we do nowadays, all the content that we gobble up throughout the days, it's hard not to compare. Right. But really when it comes down to it, it's, it's what's happening at our store with our people, uh, in the market that we're trying to drive and how can, how can all these platforms that, which are all valuable inventory management tools, CRMs, everything that we use within the store, they're all valuable, right? Uh-huh. But how can we apply it to what's happening and, and not uh, get uh, paralysis by over analysis and thereby not act on this stuff. Right. And that's where the problem comes in. That's where we have a tendency to, set it and forget it. And, and, and we don't go back and, and look at things, right. When you're looking at your inventory management tool and, and you see, and, and, and I'll use V auto because that's all I ever use. So I'm familiar with V auto is, you know, V auto shows you right there in the trending. If the markets, if we show it in our software, but you can see a trend line if the market's dropping on that vehicle. Right. And if I was, if I was priced three days ago at 98% and now today, as a result of the market dropping, I'm at one Oh one. I can't leave that alone. I have to acknowledge that and I have to make a move, right? If I was willing to be at 98% three days ago, would I not be willing to be there today? If, especially if the market dropped on that vehicle. So I think that's the thing is we, we, the, we, we can't allow this, all this stuff to, to cause that paralysis and then not make moves or go back and check on things consistently so that we can stay proactive and ahead. Cause I promise you this, there's some one of your competitors is doing that. I can promise you that. Absolutely. Yeah, million percent. You know, and John, that's you know a perfect uh, perfect segue here into you know wrapping up here today. But we get a ton of questions each and every single week. You know, whether it's with lot pop inc whether it's from this podcast we get a ton of questions each and every week going okay great you know you guys at lot pop y'all have helped us drive more activity great we've got these leads coming in but my gosh what is what's our next step i mean should we use ai should we do this should we change our process in our crm what should we do next because we want to capture that wave we want to have ourselves prepared for that wave coming in, we want to have our processes in place with this follow-up, you know, through these winter times coming when we all historically see the market soften up a little bit for us and retail sales come down just a smidgen. This is the perfect opportunity to share with all of our listeners, to share with all of our viewers that next week we have a very special guest that is going to be joining us that has a lot of really great best practices. I can't wait to have that person. I'm not gonna say if it's a him or a her because I don't wanna give it away because a lot of people in the industry know this person and this person is a beast when it comes to follow-up. I cannot wait for next week's episode when we have this person on because they're gonna help share a lot of insights and a lot of best practices to answer a lot of the questions that we've talked about over this last four weeks. We're going to put a nice bow on it. And that person's going to help us unpack a little bit more. But also, we are right around the corner from NADA. I mean, just in a few short months, we're going to be at NADA. 
<clears throat> excuse me, guys. And I highly, highly, highly recommend our existing clients here at Lot Pop, new clients that just want to have their processes broke down and really see where they can potentially take something back from NADA without costing them a dollar. Come over to booth 1219 when we get down to New Orleans and we will gladly sit down with you at no charge and look at your processes and help you take something back besides a pair of socks and a squishy football. We'll tell, we'll give you some stuff to take back to your store to make impact on your business. That being said, Ronaldo Leonard, our director of training and performance engineering, on behalf of John Anderson, our chief experience officer, our executive vice president, our people, and myself, Chris Keene, senior yep. vice president of dealer relations. We thank you guys for tuning in again, for listening again. We ask that you share this. We know there's some great content here. It may only be one piece of great content, but we ask that you share the podcast. We ask that you share the videos and we ask that you send more questions in on the YouTube channel. Comment below anything that you want to comment on. We're happy to answer it. Just like our buddy Bobby Brister asked where my hat was. Old Bobby down there is uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Here it is for you, brother. You guys want to see a different color hat next week? Let me know. I'll throw a different color on. Outside of that, John Anderson, any closing thoughts? The only thing I'd say hey, was was uh, Bobby was Bobby in the in the league? No, that that was Bubby, wasn't it? Bubby Brister. He may be Ken Are they related? He may be Ken Buck. He could <laughs> be. Oh man. Hey, no. What I the only thing I want to add is listen. Hopefully that hopefully if you're if you're watching and you're listening, uh, you're finding value in this because I will say this: the the number one core value at Lot Pop is dealers first. And, and the reason why uh, Chris and Ronaldo and myself uh, are doing this and, and our great producer, Brett Brandstetter, behind the scenes there, the reason why, the reason why we're doing this is really to try to uh, give some insight on things that we see. We're, you know, we're working with over, uh, over 300 dealers uh, on a weekly basis and seeing a lot of trending. And we're really just trying to give some insight to help you guys that are in, in store and are taking action every day to try to help you uh, to gain some further insight to help you get to help you get better. And hopefully that's what's coming across is is listen this industry. I think those those other two guys on the screen shaking their head yes right now. I think they would agree this industry has been fantastic to all of us. And this mm -hmm. this is truly a way for us to uh, to give back. And that's what this thing was started for. So yeah, we just hopefully you find value in this thing. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Love it. The only thing I got to say heading out is, uh, you know, hey, just don't be complacent with the process you have in place. Look at everything and uh, look behind, pick up the big rocks to see what kind of squiggly things are crawling, you know, underneath uh, because there's always opportunities to improve. Uh, it just comes first from diagnosing exactly what's going on, accepting there's a problem, looking for a solution, and then executing on what you've uh, put in place. So uh, thank you, that's fellas. That's yeah, always enjoy talking with you two gentlemen. And people, don't don't feel bad. I got a heater under my desk, too. So <laughs> that's, I'm stuck. That's good. Maybe, that's maybe good I'm on the line and I'm about to fall <laughs> fall over to uh, yeah, people, people status. status. Uh-huh. Yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. Well, hey, gentlemen, thank you again. Another great episode here. Love it. I love having these conversations. Automotive community, uh, thank you for listening again. Thank you for viewing. Share it, like it, comment on it. And we will see you next week with our special guest speaker. Thank you, guys.